And then bones are also going to need to have blood supply. So there, we'll talk about different openings where blood vessels are going to be allowed to go in and out of the bones. There's going to be a main nutrient artery that's going to come in to the periosteum, but eventually it's going to have to get its way into the bone, and it's going to have to go through all the different compartments in the bone so that all the cells are going to be able to get blood supply, so nutrients go in, nutrients go out. So then here's more of a close-up skin. This looks more compact and more dense, right? So we're calling this compact bone. This looks more open, so that's spongy bone. And there's always going to be passageways for blood vessels and also nerves to, to be in there in the bone. Even though it's compact, there's still openings for things to go in and out. So what's this part again here? Still play, or it's also called the metaphysis. Right? And why is that there? For the bones to grow. Right? And then, what's this hollow opening here? That's the center of the diaphysis where the bone marrow is. So this bone is strong enough with the compact outer bone around the edge. So that's here, this the outer compact edge where you have this opening in the middle. So this is more of the dense, or the compact bone. And then here, so now we're talking about the proximal femur. So when I say proximal, what does that mean? Yeah, more toward, and usually it's referring to extremities, so it's closer toward the center of the body. And then what's the opposite pair that goes with that? It's distal. Okay, so remember, it's like we're learning a foreign language. And some of the, some of my, those terms might come easier to you, but some people, it's a little bit harder. So, I mean, keep in mind that we're learning a foreign language, so that's why we'll keep going over these different things. We talked about metaphysis and epiphysis and diaphysis and medial and lateral and proximal and distal and all that stuff. So here is the proximal femur. And then again, remember, like I was saying before, in some cases you're going to have two epiphyseal plates here. The two growth plates. And then... Anybody want to take a guess of what bone this is here? Right. So this would be the tibia, this would be the fibula here. So we're looking at right here. Okay. And then what's this part of the body called? Is it the leg or the thigh? Yeah, so this is, remember, now to be more specific, when we're talking about this, it's not just the leg anymore. What do you call this? Lower extremity, upper extremity, thigh leg, uh, arm, forearm, okay? So this is the leg, or you could say lower leg, and then this is the tibia, this is the fibula, so here's the growth plate here. Uh, and then in the proximal femur, you're gonna have two growth plates. Just because the, to allow those different bony prominences to grow, then you're gonna have to have a growth plate on each side. So again, here, what's this gonna be here? Is that compact bone or spongy bone? Does that look like a lot of open spaces in there? No, it's more compact, because here's the bone marrow cavity, right? Okay, I need to closer. So this part here, okay, I was looking closer, sorry about that. So yeah, the, this part here is spongy, but I'm, okay, that part there, looking at it from an angle. So the outermost part, portion is gonna be the compact bone, and the closer you get to the epiphysis, there's going to be some spongy bone there. But when you get in the mid shaft of the uh, long bones, it's pretty much all going to be compact bone. Okay, so in this case here, there's compact bone around the outer side, and then there is some spongy bone inside there. So in some places, we'll have both. And so now here's more of a typical mid shaft of a long bone. So here, it's all compact bone, and then it's bone marrow cavity. So again, what color is that bone marrow? Yellow. Yeah. So then now, on the periosteum, I didn't, wasn't able to make two layers on this, but basically on the outside edge, it's going to be more of the fibrous dense layer. Okay. 
the fibrous layer on the outside, and then on the inside, there's going to be more cells. And so if we say the word osteogenic, what does that mean? Bone, yeah. Bone. So osteogen is going to be bone, and then genic, like genesis, is going to be growth. So this inner layer of the periosteum is also going to help with bone growth. So you're going to have osteoblasts and osteoclasts in there. And we'll talk more about those cells later. And then there's, there's a lot more bone supply to the periosteum and a lot more nerve supply to the periosteum than there is in the actual compact bone itself. Okay? So when you break your bone, if you have pain, it's more usually due to the nerve endings in the periosteum. Okay? So that's why sometimes to, to diagnose a bone fracture, what they'll do is put a tuning fork on the area where they suspect a fracture, and then that vibration is going to vibrate the periosteum, and that may be, produce pain. Or you can use a therapeutic ultrasound. Not, not, not the diagnostic ultrasound like they do for taking pictures of the babies, but more therapeutic ultrasound where they're trying to vibrate the bone. So this periosteum is going to have nerve fibers that is going to make it sensitive to pain. And then that's where the blood vessels are first going into the bone as they penetrate through the periosteum, and then eventually they're going to work their way into the compact bone. Do, do the nerves make it into the compact bone as well? Yeah, but they're not going to do as much inside of there. It's mostly into the periosteum. And then this periosteum is going to be secured to the bone with the Sharpie's fibers. So I didn't put any Sharpie fibers on here so it's not stuck onto there going to be attached firmly to the bone. And then if the periosteum is on the outside, where's the endosteum? And so which kind of bone are you going to have endosteum on? Well, you'd have it in the, in the compact bone, it would be right in this area here. And then, I'll have to check for sure, but I think the endosteum is probably going to line the trabeculae in the spongy bone. Right, so like I mentioned before, bone is not just a constant thing that stays the same. Okay? It's constantly being built up and broken down. All right? So there's going to be one type of cell that's going to build it up, another, another cell that's going to break it down. Okay? So osteo meaning bone, and so blast meaning the blood or germ. So osteoblasts are the ones that are going to, be, that are going to generate bone tissue or build it up. So osteoblasts are responsible for bone formation, and they're going to produce osteoid. And osteoid is the actual matrix that is composed of collagen, and that's what mineralizes. And also the osteoblasts are going to mineralize the osteoid. And then we're going to have the other type of cell, like I mentioned, is osteoclasts. And osteoclast, clast means to break, is break, so it's going to break down the bone. So osteoblasts form bone, osteoclasts break the bone down. Yeah, it's, it's laying down the minerals into the bone, which gives it the, the hardening. And then the, just the general cell that you're going to find in bone tissue is going to be osteocytes. Okay? Osteoblasts grow up to be osteocytes. Okay? Once you'll see when we talk about the way that the bone is formed, <clears throat> it's going to form bone all around it, and all of a sudden it's going to be surrounded. It's like when you're if you're painting a, a room or something, and if you're in a closet, and you're in the middle of the closet, all of a sudden you painted yourself all the way around. Right? Or if you were building, let's say you're building a room, you build bricks all the way around and you've got to make a door to get out, and you're stuck. So that's what happens to osteoblasts. They build bone all around them and they get stuck into a compartment and then now then they're osteoclasts. I mean uh, osteocytes. Osteocytes. Okay? So osteoblasts become osteocytes once they grow up. <clears throat> and then they're more like a spell shape or star-shaped cell. 